How's it going guys? Um, just give me a few minutes, I'm just setting this up for the stream. Hopefully a few of you will log on, you're not all out on the piss on Friday night. Bear with me. How's it going March, you alright mate? Might not be your cup of tea this, but I am going to be talking a little bit about revival, so you know, if you want to stick around for that you can do. <laughs> um, I'm just setting up my PC because I'm going to be giving a bit of a tutorial on how to modify your, your PS2. A lot of people have been asking for this one, so um, give me a few minutes and I'll... <laughs> You're right, bud. Yeah, yeah, you always have to excuse me, by the way, guys. Sometimes you, you guys will type something, but there's a little bit of a delay before it comes through on my stream. So if it looks like I carry on talking and then I'm, I'm talking to myself or talking to somebody who's disappeared... It's because a little bit of delay when you type something and when it actually comes through to me. So just bear with me on that one. <clears throat> if I'm doing a little bit of sniffling as well, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, the missus has got quite a bad cold at the moment. And there's a bowl, a hot bowl of old soil just through <laughs> into the living room. And it's it's seeping into here. So I've got a, a really strong menthol smell in here. So it's opening up my sinuses as well. So um, how's it going, Simon? You all right, mate? Uh, excited for the Spectrum next. I know you post a lot in there. <laughs> um, right, okay, there's a few of you logging on now, so I might as well start it. I'm going to flip it round to me. Now, how will you be able to hear me when I flip the camera? Because uh, I know last year, just tell me if the sound goes strange. I know that last year um, people were having problems hearing me when I have it on um, front facing camera. So tell me if you can hear me okay or if the sound clips out a bit, okay? So, um, anyway, hi guys, how you doing? Uh, yum Yum Retro Gaming Stream. Excellent, thanks Simon. Um, uh, welcome back to Yum Yum Retro Gaming. Uh, been a bit of a break, last video from me was back in about mid-December, I think. Uh, I, As a lot of people know by now, I had a bit of an unplug over Christmas, so I've not been terribly well. Uh, last year I was, I was sleeping quite badly and... Um, I really need to take some time out for my health. So I'm actually taking some time off from my usual endeavors. Uh, there's a lot of things I'm not doing in order to get other things done, which I can do from home safely and uh, that I'm able to do because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty crap right now. Uh, I've got problems with my legs, problems with my joints, problems with my knees. It's all as a backlash of having the stroke. So I don't want to bore you too much with it. I did a big post about it recently, but just so you know, that's where I'm at. So I, I actually put the, uh, the the streams on hold because I've been having to do a few things to my house and it was Christmas and whatever else. So yeah, but I'm back now anyway. I'm going to be doing some streams and uh, I'm doing a stream today because uh, it's something I meant to do months ago and I just kept putting it off because I had a lot of new retro kit coming in and I kept like, it was all just building up and I was wondering what video to do next and some videos you need a few extra bits to turn up before you can actually do anything. And those bits didn't arrive, so uh, a few bits have arrived now, so I'm going to be doing some more streams soon. But uh, this is one a lot of people have been asking for, so uh, very shortly I'm going to be showing you um, the how to modify your PS2 uh, to run games directly from a hard drive, uh, to do away completely with the need for a memory card, and uh, to be honest, it, these kind of mods are desperately needed on aging systems now. We've got aging, you know, we've got aging CD based consoles, disc based consoles, and uh, those lasers are going to pack in, you know, pretty soon. One of the biggest problems at the moment we've got is with the original PlayStation. That one is definitely on its way out, and the solution is needed fast. So, um, yeah, and the solution is needed fast. So, uh, being able to modify the old consoles with some kind of modern storage medium to make them more playable and keep them running is, is definitely the way to go. Um, so I'll just quickly flip the camera in and show you what we're talking about. So as you can see here, I've got up on the screen uh, a menu which will be familiar to some of you, not so familiar to others. Um, I've got my original fat PS2 there, or one of them. I've actually cleared a few out recently. I had loads of the damn things. 
and you can see that around the just around the back there you can just about make out is a playstation uh, network adapter now in order to do this mod you need one of those uh, you'll also need a hard drive to be able to do this and you'll of course you'll need your pc and a way to be able to hook um, everything up together to be able to copy to it um, <clears throat> I'll, um, if any of you wanted to follow this, I'm going to have a quick talk about Revival and then we'll get back to it in its time. Um, but I'm going to have a quick talk about, about Revival first, um, just to give you a chance, anybody who wants to follow this live, to prep. Uh, I had mentioned this before, so if you've got any of those kind of things lying about, dig them out and we'll, I'll, I'll talk you through it shortly. <clears throat> yeah, definitely Simon, definitely. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you all about that in just a few minutes but first things first uh, we're back for the new year obviously and as you've seen in the announcements recently um, Revival is back for 2019 we've got another main event going on at Bescott Stadium here in Warsaw and um, we've booked the entire venue out just again so we've got the two massive venue halls we've also got the um, the end space the, the pinball alley we designate it as and also the, the, the new Talks Arena room. So we're gonna be coming back in full scale yet again, and we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be completely flipping it this year. Um, as, as people know, we like to do a different theme every year. We like to mix it up a little bit, because just because something's retro doesn't mean you can't do something fresh. Now, in the last couple of years, we've, we've had a theme, we've had uh, Generation X, where we, we did like an 80s room and a 90s room, we did the solstice thing, you know, it was in summer, it was just basically around that. We've done the winter warmer thing where we just had little doses of each. You know, we had uh, the zap thing in winter, which was, well, supposed to be centered around the, the zap launch, but unfortunately some people couldn't make it. Uh, and then of course we had the, um, the rivals in 2017, which was heavily focused on, you know, uh, competitions and things like that, because that was the first year we had Dave Perry in. Now, uh, this year, the theme is Gaming Legends, and the theme is basically, uh, it's, it's, a, it's around the people who started and um, have made the scene, so the guests. We're gonna be doing something completely different with the guests this year, and I'll talk about all about that when we do the official announcement. But I've invited Chris Wilkins to come back, who obviously helped me start Revival Retro Events, uh, and we're gonna be doing something new with the guests this year that's a bit more akin to what the Comic Cons do, uh, I think you're going to like it. Uh, some of the guests we're going to be having back, you'd have seen several times before. So to mix it up, we're going to be doing something a little bit different with them um, and allow you to get a little bit more hands-on with them. So I'll go into that a little bit more and I will also be talking about the guests in due course, but we're, we're waiting on that because we're trying to get wait for some confirmations before we do. <clears throat> and the other part of it is gaming legends, the people who proliferated the scene. So the people who have since um, made the scene what it is, and that is retro gamers and the people who've lived in games. So that's you out there, basically. We've got several pro gamers coming, people who are really, really good in their field. You know, some arcade professionals. A couple of them have set, you know, world records on, on a lot of the most popular arcade games and things like that. Uh, and centered around that, we're going to be doing um, a Fun Spot style tournament. Now, Fun Spot is the big tournament in America that obviously. You might have seen on things like King of Kong and um, things like that. That is their big, you know, big prize arcade tournament where all the pros go to play. A few of the English players actually go over to that still because they still hold that every year at Fun Spot. Now, as you know, places like Arcade Club now are far bigger than, you know, Fun Spot and that. And I'd love to do something like that dedicated over here. But, you know, it operates as an operating business. It's difficult to reserve the play saves. We did talk about the idea, so we, but because it's been practical, it was more more practical to do it at an event. And so this year, um, we're going to be doing uh, our own fun spot style tournament at Revival, and there's going to be a pro level and a casual level. So people who you know you're pretty average at your games can still take part. There'll be ten, probably ten machines, uh, where you have to set your high scores, and there'll be pro there'll be some top prizes for first and second place in both categories. There'll be a limited number of entrants, so it'd be a good idea to register your interest early. <clears throat> and uh, we're gonna have some really, really top prizes on that, so uh, you're gonna wanna get involved in that. There'll also be more on the floor competitions. Uh, we've, been, we've been speaking with some of our past and present uh, team members. 
There's likely going to be a dedicated Nintendo, probably SNES based tournament. Uh, there's also probably going to be a dedicated Sega based tournament. Um, so, you know, there's going to be lots of different things to get your hands, your hands in on there. Uh, we've also invited a lot more traders, or say a lot more traders. There's going to be more trader space allocated because more and more people are coming to these things to pick up, uh, to add to their retro collections. There's going to be bigger spaces for traders. There'll be a couple of new ones, a couple of new things being sold, a couple of new faces. We're also talking with some people on some new attractions around about having a dedicated area uh, purely for rare machines. I've, I've acquired a lot of rare consoles and things myself. Uh, there's going to be a, an area possibly dedicated to custom projects because there's a few little custom builds, not just arcade machines being built, that people have grown their collections around about doing that. Uh, there's going to be uh, dedicated areas to, uh, to, to micros we've got a few more micro traders and things coming there's people wanting to do talks uh, and workshops on certain things that they're working on product launches and things like that and um you know there's there's just going to be a little bit more of everything you like to say we're trying to mix things up the, the indie gaming area is going to be expanded we've got people wanting to do something grander on there you know we're going to be having a massive amount of arcade machines again i've already put a call out for um for people to vote for what arcade machines they want, uh, they want to see back, and I'll, I'll put a call out for, I'll be putting a call out for what pinball machines people want to see as well. So, going to be lots to enjoy, and uh, I think you're all going to get a kick out of that. It's going to be happening on the fifteenth uh, and sixteenth of June at Banksy Stadium, otherwise known as WFC, the venue, otherwise known as Bescott Stadium. Uh, it's Warsaw FC's football ground, and it's right by Junction Nine of the M6. It's a busy part of the motorway, but uh, in the summertime roundabout when we do it, it's perfectly accessible for everyone. It should be pretty clear because it's during the holiday season. We have had to move the event back, obviously, to mid-June this year, and that's because of some um, rather unfavourable actions by event organisers not being considerate to dates. And uh, so rather than making people choose, we've said that we will move the event into June. The Sunday is Father's Day, I'm going to say that now. However, at the end of the day, the majority of our guests are men aged 18 to 35. If it's supposed to be Father's Day and about the fathers, tell your kids this is what you want to do. Bring them along, show them your type of gaming, have a good day out, and you've still got the Saturday even if you can't make the Sunday. So there you go. So that's Revival 2019. I hope you all come. I hope you continue to support it. We're offering our discounts for early, early bought tickets. We're offering discounts for groups, discounts for families. So get yourselves along, you know, and, you know, enjoy, enjoy the event. So, um, right. So that's Revival. Um, I'm going to be doing more stuff with Yami on Retro Gaming. Pretty soon I'm going to be covering development of Revival Survival, the next version, because that is, well, it's on its way, basically. Um, there's been a lot of development in that over Christmas period, and uh, I'll be showing you some more live development of that pretty soon. And uh, but right now I'm going to talk you through uh, PS2 modding and tell you what it's all about. So just give me one second to check on my dogs. Okay, right, it's all right. We've had our um, our deliveries come for our, our food, and I didn't realise it wasn't supposed to be coming for another hour and a half, and it's come now. So sod's law, really, isn't it? So anyway, I hope you can you can hear me and you can follow this okay and the dog isn't too distracting. So um, anyway, let's uh, flip this round and talk to you and tell you exactly what's going on. So uh, PS2s, yeah, for a while um, you've been able to modify PS2s, you know. Some of you out there might have uh, mod chipped PS2s. Some of you um, might have done something with the free McBoot thing, which is the more recent thing to do where you would soft modify a memory card to enable booting from USB or from a hard drive. Well, this is the probably the last revision of, of those mods. Uh, what it allows you to do is completely do away with the need for any kind of mod chip, any kind of memory card, any kind of modification to the system itself. And all you're going to need to be able to do it, like I say, is a PlayStation network adapter and a hard drive, right? Now the standard PlayStation network adapter, yeah, catch you later, Mike. You can always watch this back, mate. You can always watch this back. So, um, yeah, the, the standard PlayStation network adapter um, is um, 
it's only for IDE hard drive, which obviously is, is the older style hard drive. Um, now you can still use an IDE hard drive, but that's a trickier, um, that's a trickier thing to do because you've got to find a PC to be able to hook that up to. So what you can actually do now, what you can actually do now is you can buy basically cloned network adapters, which have a SATA connection instead. Uh, which does open up the, the type of hard drives you can have, makes them a little bit faster, a little bit more reliable. You can still get brand new SATA hard drives and um, it'll allow you to be able to more easily connect it to a computer to, to do this modification on. So what I've got here is I've got one of those cloned um, network adapters. I've got myself, uh, it's a spare 160 gigabyte SATA hard drive as you can see there and quite recently I was doing this I do quite often have um, st like standard older PCs that have got you know normal desktop PCs with SATA connections in there that allow me to do this quite easily and uh, but because it's a bit bulky to have that all around I've now taken to doing it through my standard laptop so in order to do that you're gonna need an external uh, hard drive dock this one cost me, I think it was about 12 quid off of eBay. Uh, and I needed one anyway, because it's got multiple memory card readers on there, extra USB ports. Um, but you've also got connections there for one SATA hard, three and a half inch hard drive, uh, IDE three and a half inch hard drive. And there's also an extra connection there at the very bottom for the 44 pin um, IDE laptop drives as well. So, um, uh, there's, there's, uh, if, if you need to find a way to hook things up to your computer, that, that connects by USB and that's the way to do it. So the hard drive modification itself, once it's done, I did this one a little while ago. And the way it works is you plug your hard drive into the um, network adapter. You push that into the rear of your PlayStation and then the network adapter itself just screws into the back of it and stays completely locked in. I should point out this modification is only going to work with the fat PS2s. You can't do this with the slim PS2s. You can use the similar software exploit, but you can't have a built-in hard drive because obviously that wasn't available. You can't plug a network adapter into a slim PS2 because they had the network function just built into the back of the console and no way to attach the hard drive. I think back in the day, the hard drive expansion was created to, to start allowing um, you know, network playback, which is why the network adapter itself was built into the hard drive adapter. Um, and uh, the network adapter was only ever used, I think for Final Fantasy XI and probably two games in Japan, probably, um, well, the hard drive was certainly only used for Final Fantasy XI. It came with its own hard drive that you had to plug in. So obviously, if you've got a slim PS2, you can't play Final Fantasy XI. So, but anyway, um, for for fat PS2s, really, it was the only way to get network functionality, uh, whether you had the hard drive in or not. And obviously, now we're getting to this point in time where people are looking to preserve their PS2s. This is the best way to go about it. So, once you've got your hard drive and you've got your PS2, um, you set it all up with the modification, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. And then once it's complete, you'll be able to load your system straight uh, and it will boot straight into this menu system. You won't need any kind of mod chip. You won't need any kind of uh, modified memory card or any other kind of modification to the console. It's completely removable, returns the system back to normal but it means you're preserving your laser, or if your laser's completely dead, you can do away with it. The good thing is you can do this exploit without the need for any kind of disk drive, whereas things like, um, there's other systems like uh, the Saturn where you've got the action replay kind of soft mod, um, but you, you still need to be able to read discs. If your disk drive's going, you're stuffed. With this, you can do all the entire modification off the console, put it onto the console without the need for the laser. So. So when it loads you, you're presented with your menu like this and you can do, well, you can launch your game straight from the menu. Um, obviously, this the hard drive I've got in here, I think, is a 500 gigabyte hard drive. And I've loaded it up with a lot of games that 
I own myself as it happens or, or games that like people like to play find good uh, but it's also full of a lot of rhythm games because I take my um, consoles to events and people like to be able to play things like Guitar Hero and the dance mat and that. It's always popular at like the Comic Cons and stuff like that. So I've loaded mine up with all that. You can of course choose any games that you want. Um, the beauty of it, it will do, it's, it will make it completely region free. So you can use um, American uh, ISOs, you can use Japanese ISOs and you can use your British ISOs. You can also use modified ISOs. Right, Craig, the, uh, the maximum hard drive capacity for this is two terabyte. So pretty much the market maximum at the moment. It will, so the modification uh, from about two years ago, this modification has been out a long time. So it's been revised a lot and it's been supporting up to two terabyte hard drives for a long time. It will also support using certain adapters you can get for your desktop, solid state drives. So if you have got a solid state drive and a SATA adapter for it, uh, and like a mounting adapter for it, uh, to fit with inside the, the PS2's hard drive um, bay, uh, then you can use a solid state drive. It doesn't increase the load times or the operational speed of it massively, but it, it, is, it does obviously, it's not as subject to vibrations as like a, a mechanical hard drive is. Um, yeah, well, stay tuned to this video then, Craig, and I'll talk you through it. I am still mean to get back to you. I do apologise for that. I've been busy with a million things. If you replay the video, you'll see why. So anyway, um, yeah, so when you go, you get your list like this. Um, you can do a few things before you launch it. If you press triangle, you get a few settings here. And what you can actually do is, handily with the hard drive, you can create a, a virtual memory card which I've done, uh, I've done dual slots here for memory cards for each and every game that's on here. Um, so rather than needing to even plug in a hard drive, it will create a virtual memory card and you can save your games to and from that. You can also, if you do it a specific way, pull those memory cards off and, and copy them to genuine memory cards. So it's quite handy. Uh, it also means if you download memory card files from the internet uh, using a USB drive, you can actually copy them onto the hard drive. And so, like games where you want to, you know, activate cheats or open everything up, you know, like unlockables and that, you can very much do that as you would with an emulator. There's also a few little switches you can tick here. Um, it gives you a little briefing at the bottom corner there. You can see use ILP hack disable dual layer access unhook syscalls. Uh, there's very few games, and I can tell you now, there's probably one or two games that I've come across where you need to turn any of those flags on in order to get the game to boot. Um, most games work from the off. The compatibility is 95%. You know, there's not a lot not going to work. Just for the fat PS2, Paul, yes, not the slim. The, the slim PS2 doesn't have a hard drive bay. Uh, you can do a mod. I'm not going to show it on this video, but you can still do... A soft mod and use an external hard drive with a slim ps2 but i'll explain shortly why that's not a good idea um but yes this is uh this this is a fat ps2 the reason this is so good is there are a lot of fat ps2s going about they're going super cheap on places like ebay and people are wanting to get more use out of them but like the ps1s the hard drive that sorry the lasers are failing at ridiculous rates so if you want to make a PS2 usable, fully usable, um, and negate the need for discs and, and moving parts for the most part, you can do this mod. Or if you've got a slim PS2 that, where the laser's dying, because I've got a couple of those, you can do away with that, jump on eBay, pay 10 or 20 quid, pick up a fat PS2 and do this mod too. You can buy a network adapter, one of these clone network adapters, which are brand new, they're still being manufactured. In fact, they're being manufactured specifically specifically for this purpose. You can buy one of these network adapters um, off eBay now that they're made by a company called GameStar. And you can buy one for about 15, 20 quid. Um, SATA hard drives, I mean, I'm gonna be showing you today using this, which is just a standard 160 gigabyte. I just pulled this out of a PC that I had come in recently, but you can use up to a two terabyte hard drive and that's not gonna cost you the earth either. The one I'm using in here, 
that I'm showing you on screen at the moment is a 500 gigabyte one. And um, to be honest, I find that perfectly acceptable. I think on here, I've got about 100 or so games. Now, there's, there's not loads of A1 titles that I absolutely love, but I've got things on here like, you know, Resident Evil, Code Veronica. I love the Resident Evil games. I've even put Outbreak on here, even though I'm not a fan. Uh, the Silent Hill games, we've got 2, 3, 4, Shattered Memories and Origins. Like I say, I've got a lot of rhythm games on, on here because I use it for events like the Sing Stars, Buzz, things like that. We've got Soul Calibur, a uh, couple of good fighting games. Star Wars The Force Unleashed, you know, we've got Tekken, the Tekken games, uh, The Sims, I'm a big fan of The Sims, we've got the Time Crisis games on there, I've got a Gun Con, so obviously, you know, they work well. The Tomb Raider games, preferred the PS1 games to be honest, but they're there. Uh, the Tony Hawk, Hawk games, which I'm a big fan of, and then obviously going back to the top, uh, you can see Spyro, Metal Gear Solid, uh, the Lego games for the kids that like to play. Hyper Street Fighter 2, that is a great version of Street Fighter. Jack and Daxter, Kingdom Hearts. Um, I've got the Final Fantasy, I've got all the Grand Theft Autos on here, obviously. And uh, the Final Fantasy games, which I love as well. And of course, Gran Turismo, I love the Gran Turismo games. Gran Turismo 3 and 4, superb games. Ah, right, okay, Craig, yeah, you've already got the network adapter and memory cards, you're just about to do the Freema boot. Right. Don't do, don't bother with the memory card, and I'll t I'll tell you why it's a pain in the ass, right? For anybody who's trying to do this with a slim PS2, or just trying to do it with the Freeman boot, um, the pain in the ass you're going to have. Uh, Freeman boot stands for free memory card boot, and what it does is you basically use a modified PS2 uh, and a boot disc and a USB stick, and you install like a payload onto um, onto an original uh, PlayStation memory card. It kind of sucks because you need the memory card in to be able to boot the system, which means you've got a memory card sticking out the front all the time. Uh, you need it whenever you reset the system, which is a pain in the arse. And it means, because you can't save to that memory card, it means if you want to save your games, you've got to switch it around afterwards and you've got to put another memory card in to save your games and that's not convenient at all i used to run my ps2s that way i used to run them for events that way and i'm just i just wasn't a fan um so you know when i found out you could do it without the need for any of those things i thought it was a great thing and i just had to do it so i've now modified a couple of my ps2s in this way uh, the good thing is if you have got a working laser you can rip your own discs directly to the hard drive once it's in there I mean, you can put them into uh, your PC anyway and rip those discs to the hard drive connected to it. So, um, yeah, with the, with the slim um, PS2s, the big problem with them, with, as somebody's pointed out, is you can do the free uh, memory card boot trick. Um, you either need to have a USB uh, flash drive plugged into the front and a USB hard drive to store your games, or a free, free boot memory card and then a USB hard drive. The problem is the PS2 is only USB 1.1. You gotta remember when these came out, uh, they were being developed in 99, you know, in 98, 99, 2000, came out in 2000, late 2000, I think it was. And uh, so the USB standard then, it would have been built around USB 1. Connectivity on USB wasn't as important then. There's very few peripherals that use the USB connection. Uh, there's a couple of steering wheels, and I think they only draw the power from there. But yeah, it's not a very fast protocol at all. And the problem is when you're trying to play PS2 games, which are quite big, um, video stutters, the processing stutters, so things like draw distances will suffer. You'll get slow down in games. And that's why I don't recommend you do this with, uh, you do any kind of modification for a hard drive with a PS2 Slim. This is the only way to do it. You won't get any slow down. In fact, It'll be a lot faster than a disc. It'll be a lot more reliable than a disc. And like I say, doing it this way, you're doing away with all memory cards and everything. So you can see I've done my modifications there. If I just jump into, I'll quickly jump into a game. We'll go into, we'll go into to, uh, Crazy Taxi. Because obviously you can see there if we've got um, saves lined up. So hit the button. Loads of configuration, you get some funky colours while it does the load process. 
and straight into the game. No, no pissing about. Uh, then we press start and into the game. I've only got the sound on quiet. The sound's perfectly fine. I've just got it on quiet so you can hear me talk. Of course, crazy taxi. Crazy taxi as it happens is the reason I bought a PS2 and I bought it off a friend who bought one, wasn't that impressed and I loved Crazy Taxi in the arcade and when I saw it was arcade perfect on PS2, I had to have one. Uh, I did still have that PS2 until recently but that was one of the ones that was early mod chipped and the laser died on it unfortunately. So, so you can see there it says the memory card for PlayStation is in use Press the X button to create a new file. Obviously, there's no memory card actually plugged in, so it's recognising that I've, I've kind of injected a fake virtual memory card, and it'll create a save file for that. There we go. It's created a save file for the game, and then I can save my options and everything to that. I can save and load to and from that memory card. Uh, I'll just quickly go into the game and show you that everything's running at full speed. There's no music stutter. Perfectly fine. Oh, I'm not actually going to be able to play this very well. I'm playing with a controller <laughs> with a shattered R2 button. I dropped it not long the other day and broke the R2 button off. So I'm, I'm pressing just a bare contact her to kind of try and play this but yeah there's a uh, there's crazy taxi anyway and you can see it plays just as it would do if it was on a disc so um there is actually there is actually a soft reset you can do with this as well but it doesn't work on every game i'll try and do it now i think it's select and start and all four shoulder buttons oh and it has actually worked on this game it doesn't work on all games and you press that and that should now restart the console and reboot into the PS2 loader. So um, all being well, it should now reboot into the PS2 menu, uh, loader menu. So so you can see when you first start the console, you, yeah, it'll load up and then it'll go straight into this open PS2 loader, which is the game selection menu. I've loaded this up with a custom theme and I've also added artwork and you know screenshots as well. You can choose screenshots. If I go to the settings menu here, you can change the theme. There's a few different themes that you can use. You can do things with it. There you go, you can, you can change the theme. I, I like this one called Universe, it's quite cool. Um, you change the language, you can change, it automatically refreshes the list every time. You can change the menu colours, you can change the writing colours, you can change the video to be automatic, which is good if you've got more different region games on here. Yeah, exactly, Craig. Just like Everdrives, just like the Everdrives, it works in pretty much the same way. Now, it's not a new telly, mate. This is the one I was using before Christmas. Um, I just, I've tuned it up and adjusted the, the settings slightly. So, the, this is only a 20... I think it's a 22 inch screen or 24 inch screen. I'm just very close to it at the moment. It's not, not a great TV, but it's great for doing this videos because it means I can actually film, you know, this close up and you can see what's going on. I've just adjusted the settings so it picks up a bit better on my camera. So, yeah, but yeah, you can turn VSync on, you can activate widescreen, which is good for the games that do have it. So, anyway, so that's what you're looking at anyway. Um, I'll pair it off from there. There's also a few more other options you have. Um, you don't just have PS2 loader. I've modified mine so it loads straight into PS2 loader. Once you've configured it the way you want, that's what you want to do. But if I start this up and hold the X button, so I'm holding, I'm holding the start and the X button because I can't remember which one I've set it up as, but it'll load the standard uh, copyright screen now instead of going to open PS2 loader, what it will actually do is it will go into the, the standard free McBoot um, option screen, which looks very similar to the PS2 BIOS menu, 
but it allows you to load a few different programs. So you'll see in a second when it loads up. We should do it, there we go. Oh, I've, I've loaded the configurator, that's my bad. Um, I'll talk to you about this in a minute, but um, I'm trying to remember which option it is now. Yeah, so I've set up a few shortcuts on mine. I'll talk to you about those once I've gone through how to do it. Let's just see if it'll load into it this time, or whether it'll go back to that. So it's been about a month since I used it, so I'm trying to remember what shortcut keys I set up. Yeah, I've set up all kinds of shortcut keys, so. Right, okay. Um, it's all right, I'll, I'll kill it down anyway and I'll talk to you about what we're doing, so. There you go, so PS2's off. So, PS2's off, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out my memory card, because, sorry, my hard drive, because I've got another hard drive I'm gonna set up from fresh, so I'm just gonna adjust the camera down there. So I haven't screwed this in fully at the moment, but you can see with the network adapter, you've got the network adapter there, which is covered up with a sticker because this is a brand new network adapter. I have actually got one of the original, I've got a couple of the original um, IDE network adapters, but because they're not as practical, I prefer to use these. They work equally the same. There's nothing like really in there that's high technology or copyrighted or anything like that. So it's understandable why people have made like replicas. So uh, there's two little nuts here, which you can screw in to actually screw it and fix it permanently to the back of your console. It looks quite nice because it's got the, the similar ridges to the same size of the console on. Um, and obviously if you do want network uh, functionality for things like, we use it for joining together consoles for racing games because we've got the Gran Turismo 4 kiosks. Uh, that's when we first started using these, uh, the network adapters behind there, and you need a Cat5 uh, crossover cable to do it. So we pull that out, you can see that comes out the back there, and you can see the cavity there for the hard drive itself. It's designed to fit a three and a half inch hard drive. A few three and a half inch hard drives, a bit like mine, if we look at the side profile, they actually start to be a little bit slimmer, so you can see the bottom of it doesn't quite line up with the bottom of the console like it should. With these, what I've actually done is just inside the slot there, I've actually used a bit of sponge, which just fits over the end of the hard drive there. Uh, it absorbs the vibrations and it, it kind of lifts it up. So if you know what I mean, the hard drive isn't kind of pulling down at the end, if you know what I mean, on the inside. That's just to stabilize the drive because it's not as thick as the other one. The other hard drive I've got here, as you'll see, is the correct three and a half inch drive thickness. And you can see the difference side by side. So this won't need it. Whereas this one does need a little bit of support to stop it flapping and straining on the connection. So we pull that off and you can see there, this is the clone version. You can see there, game start. And it's got the, the connector, which goes into the back of your PS2 there. And then it's got your SATA uh, power and data cables there. Um, on the standard one, you hear would, you would have the, the 40 pin IDE connector and then the four pin Molex connector over this side. Obviously this just chains it up so it's got direct connection for SATA. This is way better. Um, you, can, you can use a pit, obviously a computer that's got those connections if you want to put the hard drive into your computer directly. Um, it's a little bit quicker when you do plug it straight into a computer directly, but it's not so significantly slower when you're using an external dock like I'm doing to make that much of um, a difference. So that's the way I'm doing it. So I've got my dock here. Oops, sorry about that. I've got my dock here. I'll stabilise my tripod a little bit better. <laughs> right, so we'll move the PS2 off to one side. Don't need the network adapter yet. We've got, this is a 160 gigabyte hard drive we're gonna do this with. So we're gonna drop that into the dock. Plug that into the SATA connection. And we'll flip this on. And then what we will do is we're gonna to go to the desktop now. It's plugged into my laptop. I've got a Windows 10 laptop here and it's plugged in using the USB port at the side of the computer there. 
It's on a USB 2 connection, this one. You can get faster USB 3 connections, I think, to do you know, for external hard drive docks, but, um, you know, it's, it's well, it, it doesn't really matter. You're only going to copy in a couple of games at a time. It takes a while anyway. Yes, an IDE device to the to SATA device. Yeah, it will work. It will work, Rich. I think that the problem is, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can use the three point five mil to two point five mil adapter, but obviously you've still got to um, you've got to fit all that within the space. Now the space is only designed to just about fit um, a three and a half uh, inch drive, so you would have to use a laptop drive if you were doing that. Laptop drive tend to spin a little bit slower as well than the uh, desktop drives do, so uh, I don't know what the performance is like on those. So, um, the way we're going to do this is you're going to need a couple of programs. Now, what I've got installed on my PS2 there and what I'm going to be showing you how to install here are slightly different because uh, I've just downloaded the latest version uh, to, show you, to show you this. But the process for it is exactly the same. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to Google. And the first thing you're going to want to find is you're going to want to find something called the FHDB Newbie Package. Now, the reason you want this package is because it's the simplest way to do it. Um, you're probably going to most likely find the 1.953 Newbie Package, which is the one I'm just highlighting there. You're not going to be able to see this too well. I haven't got a magnifier or nothing set up on my laptop. I'll try and move into a slightly better position now. One second. So, yeah, you're going to want something called the Freeman Boot Newbie Package. Oh, I can zoom in a little bit. I'll do it with icons. This might be better for you. Yeah, the Freeman Boot 1.953 Newbie Package. If you download that and extract that, what you'll find inside is you'll find a couple of programs. You'll find WinHIP, well, WinHIIP, which is a program you're going to need to copy games to the drive itself because Windows doesn't recognise the format that the PS2 uses. And you're also going, you'll also get in there HDD raw copy. Um, this will recognise a raw drive and allow you to actually format it before you start using it. Uh, and it will allow you to copy over a disk image. Now, including the newbie package, you'll also get a, a, a disk image which formats the drive and puts all the basic uh, files on there that you need. So it will install the modification itself, it will install the OpenPS2 loader program, uh, and it'll also install something called ULaunch Elf. That's basically a file browser and content management system that you can use on your PS2 using a controller. You're gonna need all of those programs in order to, to do this. And the last thing you're gonna need, of course, is PS2 uh, disk images. They will either be Q and bin files if they are CD-based um, PS2 games, or you can use Q and, Q and bin for DVD ones, but most likely you'll find them as ISO files. Uh, either file will do, uh, and WinHIP will, will handle them both. Very simple. Windows key and plus, you will zoom in. Yeah, I'm not very good at using a keyboard two-handed, Tony, unfortunately. My left hand doesn't work too well. This is why I struggle with shortcuts and things like that. It's hard to explain, but uh, trust me on that one. I know someone who's tried with the solid solid state drive, Rich, and apparently the difference is negligible. It doesn't really make much difference at all. Like I say, the only thing it does help is obviously less heat generation. Um, less, It's not as susceptible to vibrations and mechanical damage as a mechanical hard drive is. But there's no massive benefits. The biggest problem with solid state is it's a lot more expensive than getting a standard hard drive. And for the demands it's going to have for the sake of PS2 games... It's not worth paying, having to pay like 70 quid for a 256 gigabyte solid state drive as it is to just spend, you know, 50 quid for a two terabyte, three and a half inch standard hard drive. So that's, that's my recommendation is stick with hard drives. So, um, so once you've got these programs, you're going to need to do a few things. So we've got the hard drive um, plugged in, the hard drive reader is turned on. 
uh, and Windows should be recognizing it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we need to open WinHip. So I'm gonna go into the folder, we'll launch the exe file, uh, and I should say actually before I do this, you will need, if you're using Windows 10, you're gonna to need to run this as an administrator. I've already set the program up to always run as administrator. So you're gonna launch the exe file, and if you, if you need to know how to do, just right click and click run as administrator. I've got into properties and set it up to always run as administrator. If you don't, it won't recognize any external hard drives or anything you've got plugged in if you're using a desktop. So you will need to run it as administrator or else it won't work. So we go into this program. Yes, of course we trust it, we know what it is. And then you'll get this up. Now, this is this is your, your little interface for it here. If you go to select drive, it should list up any hard drives and flash drives connected to your system. So what I'm gonna say is be very careful and make sure you know exactly which hard drive is the one you want to use for your um, for your PS2. Because if like when I was um, when I was doing this using an old XP desktop, um, I had a, a two hundred and fifty gigabyte hard drive in it, and I was programming a two hundred and fifty gigabyte hard drive which had exactly the same size, exactly the same brand. So you need to know which drive is which, else you're going to end up formatting your C drive, and you really don't want to do that. You're going to have a bad time. So. What you're going to want to do, uh, obviously, the uh, the one terabyte is my inbuilt drive on my laptop. The 149.05 gigabyte, that's my um, external hard drive. So we're going to click on that. And um, I've already got a couple of things on here, but what it will say, if you have got nothing on here, is it will say, drive is not yet formatted. Uh, do you want to format it or something like that? So you hit format drive at the bottom. Um, I'm not sure how important this step is, but I've been told if it's above 100, 160 gigabyte, you should select here under format and application. There's a few options. There's HD loader 28 bit, HD loader 48 bit and toxic OS. I've been told the best one to use is the 48 bit version. So click 48 bit, click OK, and then it'll say you certain you really want to format this drive. Say yes, the format process cannot be reversed, okay. And you can see it now, obviously formatting the drive. It might give a little bit of an error at the end, but it has actually worked, I don't know, because I've run this through this a few times. But there we go, the HDL settings partition has been created. So it's created a partition on there in the correct format that a PS2 will now recognize. Please be aware that even if you now install images, when the drive is first started up, it will display blah, 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 blah. It doesn't do any of that because we're installing a pre-made uh, disk image onto this drive now. So click OK. So that's been formatted. You can see it recognised at the top as Drive 2, PS2 formatted, and that's how much available space you've got. So we will now close this programme. The next programme we're going to use is the other one that was inside the newbie package which is HDD raw copy portable. Now you don't need to install this. Uh, leave it as quick, Simon. Quick will be fine. All it needs to do is to delete the master boot record so you don't need to do anything else besides. So just leave it as quick and do the 48-bit version. So now once we've done that, we go to the other program in the newbie package, which is HDD, HDD raw copy portable this will run straight from a folder you don't need to install this either so we double click this allow it to run i don't think you need to run that as administrator it's perfectly fine now it will come up straight away and just like the other program it will list your main hard drive the hard drive you're installing to uh, and then it will actually say file what you'll need to do is click on file or double click file should i say and then you need to pick the disk image that was contained in the newbie package. Now, I've got the latest disk image here, so that's what I'm going to use. If you've managed to download the 1.953, that's fine. It's just a slightly earlier version. Um, but I've here got the 1.966 image. 
and you want, you're going to want to extract the, the seven zip file. So you've just purely got the disk image here. It should be, I think for the 1.953, it's about eight gigabyte. For the 1.966, it's only about two and a half gigabyte. <laughs> um, it should be okay if you've gone on quick format, Simon. Um, it, I mean, it formatted that, that 160 gigabyte drive there in seconds. So assuming you've got it connected the right way, it should, it should be okay. You can always watch this video back if you're trying to follow this live anyway, guys. So you pick your disk image anyway, double click that. You can see there, it then says file raw FHDB, which stands for free HD boot. And then the version image that it is. And you can see at the bottom it's saying, please select source. So you're going to want to click that first and click continue. And now it'll say, please select target. Now what you're going to want to do is obviously select the drive that you want this to go into your PS2. So there's my 160 gigabyte hard drive. Click that. That's the target. Click continue. And then you'll say what it's about to do during the duplication process. All data will be overwritten. So this is uh, obviously what you want to do. Click start. You'll get a couple of warnings. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, obviously you want, you want to write this disk image to the partition that's on there. Click yes. And you can see at the bottom there, it's, it's pretty quick. Uh, it's running about 34 megabytes a second, which is about the maximum you can expect through USB. If you had this plugged directly into your SATA connection straight on your motherboard, as I do my XP version, um, it goes at about the 100 and something megabytes per second. So it is faster to do copies when it's inside a computer, but this is a lot more convenient for most people's homes now. Uh, if I've got a load of my PCs that I'm program on, programming on at any one time, and I happen to have one of those little desktop set up, great i'll use that but if i haven't like today when i'm showing the tutorial this is how most people are likely to do it now external hard disk drive dock uh, in through usb and it's, it's plenty fast enough you can see it's at 60 percent it's only took what about 30 seconds a minute so far and what it's actually doing now is it's writing the the pre-compiled disk image to the hard drive which will contain all the programs you need it will have open ps2 loader on there it'll have the u launch elf uh, fault, uh, program and it will also have uh, a couple of other files on there that you'll need there's different ones on there to launch ps1 games there's there's programs on there to do memory card editing to create extra partitions on the drive and do other funky things but i'll talk to you about those in a minute so you can see that's completed now because the, the start prompt has come back up task complete it, it took less than less than two minutes that took. So now that's done, we can do away with that program as well. So what we've now got, you won't be able to view it in Windows. I mean, if you go back to this PC, you'll see it's not listing my drive in there. That is actually USB drive F is actually the USB drive that's on the front of my hard drive dock. So Windows won't recognize the PS2 drive if you go into Disk Manager on Windows, it will recognize it as a raw drive because it thinks it's unformatted. So uh, Windows completely ignores it while you're using the Explorer. So you don't need to worry about that right now. Now we've got the actually correctly formatted for a PS2. I've got a separate folder here. And as you can see, we've already got quite a few disk images on my drive. These are ones that I've ripped previously. And I've kept them on my hard drive for the sake of this and because I've been copying backwards and forwards off drives with my experimentation. So uh, when you download them off the internet, you'll probably find them in 7-zip format because obviously it compresses the file and makes it smaller for downloading. You'll need to extract it and then obviously you'll, you'll either have uh, ISO images which will tend to be for about the full size of a DVD, so about 4 gigabytes. Um, or some of the smaller games tended because obviously PS2 games came on CD and DVD. The CD games will be much smaller files. So things like here, we've got Guilty Gear X. That's actually uh, an arcade game that was on the Taito Type X arcade hardware. You can see there that's only 714 megabytes. So that's, that's CD size. There's other games here when they're compressed, they're even smaller. Dragon Blaze. 
It's only 70 megabyte James Pond. I never even knew that got a release on PS2. That's a real strange one. But yeah, James Pond Robocod was released on there. That's only 100 megabyte compressed. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom fully extracted is only 200 megabyte. But you can see obviously the CD images are Q and BIN files. Whereas the, uh, the, the bigger games are on DVD. So things like the Grand Theft Auto games, they're obviously full DVD size. Um, I think there are a couple of dual layer games for the system. Um, there is a program you can use. You'll need to look that one up though, because I haven't got it handy here. And what it will actually do is it will break the game down into two chunks to allow it to copy to the drive. Um, but it will piece them back together when it tries to run it on the drive, if you know what I mean. I think that the I can't remember which games exactly were dual layer, but uh, yeah, those will be bigger than four gigabytes, and you can't copy a single more than four gigabyte file, obviously, over onto um, a drive that's only like a 32 bit drive, uh, 32 bit format. So, uh, anyway. Um, so yeah, so we've got our games here. We've got some extracted, some not. I'll just show you a couple. Um, what we do now is we go back to our folder with our utilities in and we open back up uh, WinHip. And again, you need to run that as administrator if you haven't done it before. And we go back into WinHip now and if we go to select drive, you'll see in a second when it reads the drive you'll see it's listing there obviously our main hard drive and our ps2 so what you can actually do is if you've got games um if you've got a load of games installed on another drive and you've got two drives installed you can actually copy from one ps2 formatted drive directly to another we're going to be doing this from iso files and it needs to basically convert that image when it gets on mount that image on the hard drive so what we do is we select the drive first. The drive we want, obviously, is the 160 gigabyte drive. And then the bottom here, we've got an, an option for add image. So you're going to now add your disk images. So you click on image files. We go to add image. And then you can see I've already called up the, the folder here. So let's just copy a couple of games and just show you the kind of speeds we're talking about. So. Um, we'll go with um, right. We'll put Marvel vs. Capcom on. You see, it only gives the option to select the Q file. That's all you need. It will it will find the Q file and find the uh, the bin file that's associated with it. So, double click that. You can see it adds it on, and it'll tell it tells you there the estimated size it will take up on your hard drive. So you can see exactly how much space it will take up on your hard drive once it's done. So we've got that, we click start. It will ask if you want to rename it. So you, if you, if at this point, if your files are named badly, you can rename them to how you want them to appear on the menu. It tells you there the, the obviously the product code and you can see there that obviously this was originally a CD. So when it, when it, when it loads this as a virtual game, it will do it using whatever coding is needed to read a CD-based game. Click OK, and you can see it just zips through that. And blanks off the rest of the partition. It took nine seconds, and there we go. It's added Marvel vs. Capcom 2 to our drive. Um, we can add as many games as we want onto there. So we'll just add a couple more. No problem, Craig. Just watch this back another time, mate. It's pretty solid here, so watch this back. And if you want to follow this, honestly, if you're going to do it, mate, do it with just the hard drives. Forget about the memory cards. They're a pain in the arse. So, yeah, so we'll just add one or two more games here. We'll add the Guilty Gear, which I think is actually an American game. Uh, yeah, it's already named properly. A little bit bigger this one, so it'll probably take a few more seconds. But it's copying it again, 30 odd megabytes per second, which is about the maximum speed over um, USB 2, and that's perfectly acceptable. Excellent, so that's been installed. And 
we'll do a couple of DVD games for good luck. So go to add image and we'll do both of these at once. We'll add in Gran Turismo Concept and we will add in uh, Voice City Stories because that was one of the ones I was showing you on one menu just. So we'll control and I'll add both of those at once. You can see there, these are much bigger. These are like three and a half gigabyte, four gigabyte because they're DVDs. Click start. <clears throat> and we'll just leave that for a minute or two to just copy over. Like I say, plugged into a, a desktop, you know, plugging your hard drive into a desktop. The copy rates will be a lot faster, but obviously they're, they're still pretty fast over USB 2. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, once you've got your hard drives fully installed, you're never going to need to really mess with it again. All your games are stored on there, so you're perfectly fine to delete them from your computer or wherever if you want to. Now, a lot of people are probably going to, going to ask on this, so I'm going to say it now to nip it in the bud, um, where you get your ROMs. Right, at the end of the day, the first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. With all the recent um, lawsuits going on, um, with the way the internet service providers are now monitoring traffic, with the way they're monitoring your usages, uh, with the way Nintendo have you know, brought down some of the biggest ROM sites, I'm not going to be telling you where to get your ROMs. I have, never have done anyway. Um, everyone knows the legalities around it. The good thing is when it comes to things like the PS2 and that, uh, ripping your own games is very easy and most people have got massive collections for the playstations so if you want to rip your game and put it on your hard drive you can do that a lot of the games i've got on mine i do own so there's not a big problem there and other ones have been you know quite easily attainable so you know the places to get them if you want to do it it's up to you if you want to do it you know the risks associated with it but this is a perfectly legitimate way of putting, you know, your games onto a hard drive um, and running them without wrecking the laser any further on your PS2. And I'd encourage anybody to do it. So, it's done. There we go. So, it's just, just done Gran Turismo Concept and now it's just doing uh, Voice City Stories. Uh, when I did this the first time, I actually downloaded all the games I wanted set them up on my hard drive and then set them to copy i mean it, it does take you know a good a good hour or two to copy you know 50 odd games over um the hard drives can get quite hot as well because they're spinning spinning up to full speed while you're doing this i'd probably recommend you do it in little little shifts if you're a bit concerned about overworking your hard drive in a vertical position um, but at the end of the day, hard drives are built to, to take a lot of stress. If you've got a brand new hard drive especially, you're going to have no problem with it. Um, the The system itself supports up to 2 terabytes, as far as I'm aware. I think it actually supports up to 4 terabytes, but obviously you don't generally find hard drives any bigger than 2 terabytes. Um, an entire to get an entire library of PS2 games, you're not really going to get that on any size hard drive. But... If you know your games and you know what you like, at the end of the day, the, the PS2 was one of those systems that was guilty of having a lot of shovelware. So if you pick all your premium games, I mean, like I say, I've got a 500 gigabyte in my main PS2 here, and that's full of a lot of um, rhythm games and things like that. If you had a hard drive where you just want the games that you want, uh, you know, all the premium A plus games and that, if you've got, say, a 500 gigabyte hard drive, you're gonna be able to get one of those for about 25 quid, brand new, and on there, you're gonna fit, you know, about 150, 200 games. That's a lot of games, you know what I mean? I mean, honestly, how many games do you want to play that much? It's great having full libraries with old systems, but for CD-based systems, it's wise to be a bit more choosy, and there's a lot of shit out there, so, you know, I only put the stuff on there that's really worth it. The good news is it will only put on as much data as, as is needed. Like I say, you saw there with Marvel vs. Capcom, it was only 200 megabytes, so it only takes up 200 megabytes of space. So that's done. So the images have been installed. You can click OK, and you can see there it's starting to list them all down. The status is OK, the code is correct. Oh, these are all actually uh, European games. You can see there by the code. S L E S. If it was American, I think it has S L U S um S L U S as its code. 
Um, all of these games I do actually own anyway. So you can set them up in the in the menu options to run at 60 hertz if you want to. You can set them up uh, with an NTSC signal if you want to. But obviously you're gonna need the right right cabling to output the correct uh, signal into your TV if you do that. But uh, the the PS2, the sixth generation, is where TV signals and that the the lines started to blur and the world was becoming a bit more universal. If you know what I mean, so it's not so much a problem. Half your collection on a five hundred gigabyte. Simon, to be honest, mate, you'll, there'll be some there you find you're not that too bothered about. But if, I would say a five hundred gigabyte hard drive is plenty for most people. Um, but if you do if you do want to do this and do it properly and do it once, then get a two ter terabyte hard drive and and do the full whack. You know what I mean? So. But yeah, um, yeah, I've only got a five hundred gigabyte. Um, for the sake of cost, it, it could be an idea to do, to buy like a, a bulk load of five hundred gigabyte drives and just swap those drives out when you feel like it. Uh, maybe by genre or maybe by library, I don't know. But uh, yeah, five hundred gigabyte is plenty for my needs on a PS Two. So now we've done that, we exit out of that. So our hard drive has now got four games on it. It's now got all the files it needs to run. So in theory, we can now plug this straight into our PS2 and it will run. But just before we do, there's one more thing that I want to do. And that is I want to add some artwork to the uh, I want to add some artwork to the games. So there's another file here. You can download this separately. It's called OPL Manager. Now, OPL Manager, the, the menu GUI system that's on there is called OPL, Open PS2 Loader. Uh, if you download this, it, it will actually recognize your hard drive and allow you to directly add artwork to what is on there. So I'll just load up OPL Manager. You can get this separately on the internet. Just search for OPL Manager. Move it over here so you can see it better once it's loaded. It says there's a new version, but I'll go to that another time. So, right. Now, it's actually, it's actually still got the uh, the indexing from the last hard drive I had plugged in, which is the one I was just showing you that's built into my PlayStation at the moment. So, um, what we're going to do is if we go to right, local hard drive options and we hit get game list ready to get game list from ps2 hard disk drive connect to hard disk drive and click ok what it will do now is it will actually do a new ah oh okay so that didn't work that's interesting now i've not actually done this part on my windows 10 pc um let me just try and run this as administrator I'll try and run this as, as administrator and uh, see if that makes a difference. That could be why. I've only ever done the artwork downloading on my other PS2. Sorry, my other PC. Uh, yeah, you can do it over Ethernet, Tony, but it's slightly different. When you do it via Ethernet, you can do it while the PS2 is plugged in to your PC using a crossover cable or using your network. However, the data transfer times are limited by a bottleneck and transferring over network, apparently. I've not done it because it's a bit more of a complex setup and you need to use one of the programs on there, which I don't like using. Um, I prefer